Hey guys, this is Travis with Beyond Bipolar blog. So today is the first time I had a therapist in like, I want to say almost three years now. And at first I was really, really reluctant. But generally speaking, before I get to that, I just want to say I've been pretty much struggling this December and it got to the point where I would wake up at four or five in the morning and would have these like panic attack or whatever you wanted to call it, where I just wake up feeling suicidal. It got to the point where I, you know, I really, really wanted to hang myself with a belt of some sort or whatever. And though I was really reluctant to get help, I finally managed to get myself to have a therapy session today. And I'll let you guys know. Overall, you know, it's just rehashing what I already know. And I feel like it's not getting to the root cause of why I'm depressed or other reasons of my regret. So first of all, let me get to the basics. This summer has been really difficult, as you know or not know. I've been single for six years and I've been hampering on it for a while now. And I'm not even sure if my parents are aware of this, but this issue has been causing a lot of turmoil for me and it's causing a lot of pain, dread. And overall, a lot of guilt, a lot of regret. Anyway, six years ago, I met a girl from Korea. She came here and lived here for two months. Just to sum things up, she ended up leaving. And I decided to go my way with my passions, such as music and art. At the time, it seemed like apparently good reason. Another thing is, most importantly, is the fact that my parents really did not agree upon me marrying this woman. And I think that is my biggest regret up to this day. I still think about it, and I don't know how to get rid of the feeling. Yeah, I can distract myself from other sorts of means, such as, you know, focusing on my art or music. But when I'm not able to focus on those things, like this past December, I was not motivated. I didn't feel energized. I didn't feel influence i didn't feel passionate about doing anything and that really took a toll on me mentally and it got to the point where i would just feel empty and dread you know i the day i can feel distracted but I, somehow when i'm sleeping at night i guess my body somehow is attuned to my situation and it affects me at night where i do feel isolated i do feel alone i feel i do feel depressed and I haven't found a good way to get out of it and for a while I thought that maybe therapy would help or wouldn't help and to be honest with you I still feel like maybe there's still things that we could talk about. My brother ended up seeing the therapist but I guess she wasn't timely on her appointments and it kind of frustrated Kyle so he decided to leave her but it gave me the opportunity since she did reach out to me to maybe see her. We did talk today, but you know, overall, I was just rehashing some old tunes that I already speak of, and a lot of this is rehashing what I already said on Facebook. And primarily speaking, overall, I still feel like the underlying issue isn't resolved, and I already know what it is. It's just I got family members, I got friends, I got people on Facebook telling me I had to get over it and move on, but I still seem to be really, really stuck by this past relationship that I felt like in the end might have been better for me like this might have proved to me that I didn't have to focus on my passions especially now where I have this regret where I don't want to do my passions maybe I want to get a full-time job get off this disability but it was frustrating because I couldn't get myself out of this cycle I'm just glad I finally found the the cycle to get myself back into passions but before it was really really intrusive this feelings that I was feeling now people are wondering especially Kyle he doesn't understand why I'm so hard-headed with finding a native Korean person. Now, for someone who's myself, such as adoptee, Korean, you know, I do feel like I want to date someone that, that has a similar look to me. And if it's Korean, that's probably even better. You know, people say that beauty's skin deep and you got to look, you know, be on the color or the race of their skin or whatever. But for me, since I'm an adoptee and living in America, I feel like I can feel closer to my homeland of South Korea if I somehow bond with someone that is native Korean and maybe that's the reason why I bonded with this girl six years ago 
and maybe part of the reason she knew Korean and English and in a way I felt like if if I was with someone with that exposure I'd be able to at least get myself to be more inclusive to want to learn Korean and maybe be more profound to want to speak to my family since they don't know English in Korea that I could somehow speak Korean to them and I'm pretty sure they'd be happy and surprised and delighted that I do do that but I don't know I feel like if the situation happened again and I was with this girl it would have been much different now and I feel like it probably would have worked better but you know as people say it passed and I have to let it go but I feel like I still have to talk about it because I'm pretty sure there's people on my beyond my pullet bug that is totally clueless to how I've been feeling when I pretty much preached the last couple years on maintaining mental stability and here I am having suicidal thoughts, wanting to attempt suicide and you know, still having these these regrets over my relationship and letting her go. And the more I feel like I've actually made money as an artist, which is something that I should be proud of. But in the end, I still focus on the fact that, you know, it's just not enough. I need something more. And if I feel like a relationship's important to me, then I really regret not being in this one that I was in. Now, listen to me before you get your panties on a bunch and before people think that, I need to move on. Well, here's my situation. Number one, I I have bipolar disorder. I live with my dad. Number two, my dad is pretty disabled and he needs consistent help daily. Number three, I have rabbits here. Number four, the medications I'm on is really expensive. And let's say for instance, well, a random person might say, why don't you just move to Korea? You If you want to be with a native person, why don't you just learn Korean and move there? Well, I think I thought about that, but at the same time, I never worked full time my entire life. I never actually, I have the ability to have food stamps. I have the ability to have insurance covered 100% for hospitalizations, medications. That's literally $1,900 a month out of pocket. And I'm able to still focus on my passions here, which I'd probably have to give up really if I lived in Korea. So that situation already put me in a in a standstill to the point where I felt like, well, maybe I can find someone that would accept my situation. And the girl back in 2016 did accept the situation. Things went not so great because primarily, number one, she was literally taking her entire life and put it on hold to live with me in America. She did not work full time at the time, and my dad gives her a lot of shit for not working. But the reality is, how can you work when, how can you work when you don't, when you're not a citizen? You can't work. So that put that out of the bunch. And if she had a full time job there, it's a lot of risk to give up your job when Korea's job market is really, really hard to get into. And she literally was at a point where she could do that and agreed to those terms and I really wish dad would understand that that you know she might have not worked she wasn't working here but the reality is how can you work when you're not a citizen and do you know how much risk it would be if she decided to give up her job and come here just to live exclusively with me you know how other people and I've tried six years to try to communicate with women that are willing to maybe make the sacrifice of living here with my dad and my brother. And that's the situation. I'm disabled. I have disability. I know someone else that has disabled and disability. And she's literally in the same situation. And she accepts it. But for me, I still feel like, well, the next tip is A, get off disability, move on your own, or B, find someone that might be attuned to you and you can find some way to embrace where you're at and someone will embrace that, which is more than likely than not. Number one, this is what I see myself from the outsiders that number one, I'm a loser. I live with my dad. I am disabled. I have bipolar disorder. B, who the heck is going to want to be with someone that lives with their dad, uh, doesn't work full time. It focuses on their 
their passions that really doesn't bring much more money than their disability money that lives on disability that lives on food stamps a lot of this makes sense guys i know you're trying to tell me that hey you are in a situation you are in a position where you are not able to have a relationship which i get it i understand but that doesn't help me feel any better because you can tell me what ifs and what I should be doing but if I'm already feeling like crap why would I want to be ambitious to overfill that and do something different with my life it doesn't really work that way for me and these people tell me to get over it but I feel like even my therapist was glancing over it all just saying distract distract but I want to resolve this issue if I'm lonely I want to be with someone if I feel like my dad and my mom is going to be gone and the only person I'm going to have is Kyle who might live on his own and have a full-time job i want to have someone that is going to be there with me and i feel like too many people are glancing over the fact and how i really really feel about the issue and say that you know just distract yourself with your passions oh you got a good family right now oh you got good living expenses but yeah but why am i so bothered by these issues you don't it's like you guys don't understand how i'm feeling and yeah it sucks that i'm 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 rehashing these old feelings, but this is the reason on why I'm feeling depressed on why I feel like I want to take my life and other situations and why I've been so miserable this past December. I haven't been even been this miserable since 2017 when I was last hospitalized. Even COVID situation treated me better than what I feel right now. And I'm lucky that I'm able to focus on my passions right now and somehow get myself motivated again, which is primarily why I was able to just, you know, talk to my therapist and tell her this and that, but we'd never really got to the nit and gritty things that I really, and how I really, really feel about things. And, you know, for instance, back then I really didn't use personal space very well. And Joanne, my ex six years ago, came here thinking that she would live with me and she basically kicked Kyle out and that was a huge threat because he and I pretty much shared a room and he was pretty much kicked out and he took her she took his closet and this is the truth this is a three-story house but our place is packed full with things you're not gonna have somewhere they can move in and feel like they can move in because reality is it's probably only fit for three people my dad Kyle and me Having someone else here is probably not a good idea. The problem is, is that dad is disabled. He wants one of us to be there, which could be Kyle. But at the same time, I feel reluctant because B, I'm disabled. Insurance may not be covered in Korea. Even if I decide I want to be with someone native Korean, I have a better pool to select from. Or there might be girls that are interested in me. The problem is here, there's not a lot of Koreans, native Koreans that that are into me in general and i've tried you know tons of dating sites and i haven't found one person that would even take a look at me and i think that's the biggest problem because you know this girl took a look at me she understood my situation to the point she was willing to live with me to the point where she decided to move in where my dad was still here she knew that i wasn't working at the time for a while we made it work it's just the fact that my parents said they didn't want me to marry her and they feel that that was the best decision. I even got people on Facebook telling me that is the best decision because they're looking out for me. But, you know, if I want to take my own life because I'm single or I'm lonely, then that has to be addressed, man. I don't know other any other way to address it other than tell you guys, hey, I'm unhappy. I want to be with someone. I don't know how to make it work, but maybe there's someone that would accept the situation like Joanne did. And that's very risky, you know. I liked her, I was attracted to her, she was attracted to me, and things worked to the point where it could have been substantial if she wasn't forced to marry me in three months where there was a 90-day fiancé thing where you had to marry or go home. And that was my literal thought process back then. I'm pretty sure that was my parents' thought process back then. And they, they felt that that was the best thing for me. Sadly, she moved on, got married, and people could say, well, things could have been worse if she lived with you. And then she decides to divorce you. Well, I never had that opportunity, so there is going to be that regret. There is going to be that loss hope. There is going to be those lingering feelings that I have that I feel like wish, you know, what could have, could have had something that made it work versus what could have, it would have not worked, and you would have killed yourself anyway. Well, 
I want to give myself the chance to be with someone. And, you know, I don't think my parents understand that, that, you know, I am disabled, but is that really what I am? Am I just simply supposed to live life, not have anyone just because I have a disability and I have to live with my dad the rest of my life? Or B, people tell me, well, you know, you're disabled, but who cares? You got to get a full-time job. You got to work on yourself, things like that. But hasn't, haven't I been trying to do that the last six years? And even I haven't, and I'm somewhat pretty satisfied with my life. Why should I try to bend over backwards for someone just to be with someone when there was someone here that was willing to support the situation? And, you know, people might say that is a, a more mouth to feed, but it's not like I didn't have the opportunity or ability to help pay for things when she was here. And, yeah, it might have been kind of a struggle, but at the same time, you know, loneliness is a lot worse than, you know, losing some money here and there because you're holding a relationship. I almost feel like, why the hell am I hampering on this issue so much if... I'm following my passions. If I'm doing this and that, I'm making money. Why am I still unhappy? And this is just largely the situation. I let go of someone that I really cared about. I was attracted to her. And she was a native Korean, which is something I seemed to find important. My le important for me, I wanted someone that might have reminded me of myself on what could have happened if I was not adopted. Or maybe it reminds me of someone that if I was native Korean, it would help me encourage me to learn Korean versus just, you know, paying someone off to learn Korean, you're half-assed there because, you know, there's no engagement, there's no drive to continue want to learn when there's no one that speaks Korean anyway. So this is my thought process. You know, therapy was okay, really didn't answer the hardcore questions, but this is how I truly feel about my life. You know, I can tell people about my situation, but it really doesn't make me feel much better. And it doesn't make me feel much better to encourage myself to move out of my situation when, lo and behold, I'm in the hospital every two to four years. And I guess it's better to have some type of back backup plan, which is probably what I'm doing now. But at the same time, I'm going to have my brother probably respond to this, telling me that, Joanne wasn't right for me. My family's going to tell me Joanne wasn't right for me. Facebook's going to tell me that, that this girl wasn't right for me. And, you know, I feel like this has to get addressed somehow. And if I feel like by talking about it through a camera to people on my Beyond Bipolar blog, then great. I don't care as long as I'm able to get it out and express myself. It's just I was not able to express this properly to the therapist because... We really didn't dive into my, on the reason on why I'm feeling down. We weren't really diving deep on my guilt, my regret, my, my depression on what's stemming from it. And if I know this stems from it, since my family in Korea don't speak English and I'm not motivated to learn Korean, I felt that having a Korean native speaker that speaks Korean would help encourage me to learn vice versa and we kind of enable not enable but we kind of explore each other's culture generally speaking where if she wants to learn english great i can teach her i want to learn korean great sounds great right so i think about these things all the time and right now i'm thinking about it too and i'm pretty sure this is why i wake up at four or five in the morning and this is my thought process and you know i'm lonely i'm depressed i'm sad I have this regret, and I know there's going to be, like I said, there's going to be a ton of people putting backlash, saying their opinion, saying what I got to move on, saying I got to, you know, you're in a good situation, that that uh, that your parents are looking out for the best of you. But what am I supposed to do? Tell you that it is, that they're right, when in reality that's not how I feel. So it's like I feel like people are putting their opinion on something on, and not really encourage me to you know, follow my own feelings in a sense. So I think this is why I'm struggling and I don't know what else to say about it. It's just, you know, I, I really hope that as I continue this therapy session that the therapist will be more open to talk about this adoption issue and my interest in native Korean women. 
and why I'm so hampered on it and the lack there aren't many Korean native women here and why I was so attached to the one that I was and that's actually the primary reason is I felt attracted to her. She had pretty much summed up what I was looking for in a relationship. Yeah, it sucked that she kind of felt like she pretty much owned the place, but the reality is I didn't live on my own. I probably should live on my own. I'm pretty sure my dad is going to say, well, you got to work two years in order to move out in your own place, and this girl doesn't work for you, and my mom's going to say, well, you can't marry her right away. You only knew her for a month or two or three, things like that, anything that discourages me. And I... And that's what bothers me is that I can't find anyone that would understand this situation because like this is how I honestly feel about it. I don't feel a sense of any validation. I feel like a sense where everyone takes my parents' position. I feel like everyone takes the position of what my brother says or, or whatever my Facebook friends on Facebook say. So, you know, whether you're on Beyond Bipolar Bugs, since 90% of my audience is actually people that do not watch my channel, if you're one of those people, well, you can say what you say, but it's not going to really help the situation. I'm trying to address the situation, try to get over it, and if I feel like talking about it is going to make me feel better, then I am going to do that. So, these are just my thoughts today, and I hope you guys understand and my thought process and relationships and adoption and my therapy session in three years or so. And I guess it kind of hints things. I gave up on my first therapist because she said that she wouldn't be with me either.